Ever found yourself scratching a digital ticket at 2 a.m., convinced that this one, this exact one, is finally going to pay for your student loans, your crypto losses, and maybe even your dog's dental surgery? Don't worry, you're not broken. You're just playing the most elegant scam the human brain ever fell for, the lottery. I'm Mr. Pulte, your friendly neighborhood gambling tech warlock. And in this episode, we're diving deep into the twisted genius behind online lottery games. We'll explore the psychology that keeps you clicking, the math that keeps the house smiling, the tech stack behind those shiny animations, and the legal spaghetti that decides whether your game flies or gets geoblocked into oblivion. Whether you're a developer, a dreamer, or just lottery curious, we're pulling back the curtain on an industry where dopamine meets design, and where someone, somewhere, is always one click away from almost winning big. Online lottery games aren't about logic, they're about feeling lucky. The second you hit two matching symbols, your brain lights up like a slot machine on cheat mode, whispering that the third one is right there. That little moment of suspense, it's pure dopamine engineering. Near misses are no accident, they've been studied, modeled, and baked into the experience because they keep you playing. It's not just winning that's addictive, it's almost winning. And when the result is instant, no waiting, no draw dates, just tap and reveal, your reward system doesn't get a break, it just loops. Now throw in the illusion of control. Pick your lucky numbers, your anniversary, your pet's birthday, and suddenly chance feels personal. You're not gambling, you're manifesting. Add social features, push notifications, and the convenience of playing literally anywhere, and you've got a game that hits your brain from every angle. Fast, simple, and wrapped in the language of hope, online lottery games are less about math and more about emotional engineering. And baby, it works. Let's talk about the numbers. And though the part where optimism dies and, and spreadsheets take over, Every lottery game, no matter how glittery or grandma approved, runs on math designed to make sure you don't win too often. Scratchers? They're the friendlier cousin. They give you small wins, a couple of dopamine sprinkles, and then gently guide you back to the buy again button. Their return to player, that's RTP, often sits around 90 to 95% online. Sounds generous, right? Until you realize it means the house is still quietly pocketing 5 to 10% of everything you bet. Now lottery draws, those are savage. We're talking 1 in 292 million odds for something like Powerball. That's not a game, that's a cosmic prank. But here's the magic trick. Players don't do math, they feel hope. And the industry counts on that. Prize pools are either fixed, predetermined payouts per tier, or dynamic, like progressive jackpots that swell as more people pile in. Those rollovers build hype, media buzz, and sudden spikes in ticket sales, even if the actual RTP stays low. And that low RTP, it doesn't scare anyone because somebody has to win. Right, just not you, probably. So yeah, it's not rigged, it's engineered. Let's get real. If you're going to ask people to throw money at a glowing rectangle, they need to believe that Rectangle isn't screwing them over. In the physical world, you see lottery balls tumble in a plexiglass drum, or scratch a ticket with your lucky coin. Online, it's all ones, zeros, and trust issues. That's where RNGs come in, random number generators. If you're operating in a regulated market, your RNG better be certified by some lab with a name like GLI, IE Tech, or ECO, GRA. These guys test the game, audit the math, and basically make sure your scratcher isn't secretly printing wins for your cousin in Aruba. If it passes, it gets a badge. If not, back to the drawing board, or possibly to jail. But in the crypto jungle, where trust is an endangered species, you've got provably fair systems. It sounds fancy, and it is. These use cryptographic hashes and seed combinations between the player and the server, so every result can be verified. You get the hash up front, you make your move, and after the result, you can check the math yourself. It's like open source lottery. Nerds love it. But here's the catch. Provably fair doesn't mean well designed. It just means no one changed the outcome mid-flight. It's transparency, not security. Uh, so sure, your ticket might be mathematically clean, but if the UX feels like a Windows 98 pop-up ad, players will still run. Behind every you win banner, behind every scratch animation and sparkle sound, there's a tired developer running on cold coffee and broken dreams. Building an online lottery game isn't about luck, no, it's about architecture. Mobile first, always. Players aren't on desktops. They're on couches, buses, toilets. So you build with React Native, Flutter, or straight up HTML5 if you want it to run everywhere. Graphics, Pixie.js, Phaser, sometimes Unity if you're feeling fancy. You want big buttons, loud feedback, and zero confusion. Because trust me, if a grandma can't find the buy button in under two seconds, you're done. But it's not just code, it's choreography. Every win needs to feel like a win. Coins explode, music swells, maybe a cartoon turkey dances across the screen. That's not fluff, that's emotional reinforcement. And when you lose, you don't get silence. You get a gentle trombone, a wink, maybe a quick try again, so soft it feels like an apology. Good UX turns disappointment into another spin. And under the hood, payments, RNG calls, user sessions, real-time stats, all running on a backend that better scale fast when your promo goes viral. Because if your app crashes mid-scratch, you're not just losing players, you're starting fires. So you built your lottery game. It works. It sparkles. It showers players in virtual confetti. Can you launch it? 
Of course not, because unless you enjoy cease and desist emails and frozen bank accounts, you need a license. And that's where the real game begins. Every country, every state, every little regulatory kingdom has its own rules. In the US, lotteries are state-run. You want to sell tickets in Michigan? Great, be the Michigan lottery. Otherwise, take a seat. Some states allow instant games online, as long as you geofence users tighter than a CIA compound. Cross state lines. Congratulations, you've just violated the Wire Act. Europe, a beautiful patchwork of red tape. The UK, France, Spain. They all have national lotteries, strict tech requirements, and watchdogs who care deeply about responsible play and whether your scratcher theme offends anyone. Germany loves process. Italy loves paperwork. The Netherlands will probably ask for a lab test and a horoscope. Latin America is waking up fast. Places like Brazil and Colombia are modernizing, encouraging online sales to fund public causes, but they still want your ID, your tax forms, and maybe a moral affidavit from your childhood priest. Asia is a mix of only the government can do that, and don't ask, don't deploy. In Africa, rapid growth, mobile first, and hungry for regulation that actually works, which means if you get in early and play clean, you might just ride the wave. Let's talk about the part every regulator, psychologist, and morally anxious CEO puts in bold, responsible gambling. It's that thing you're legally required to care about, and ethically, probably should, because here's the truth. These games are engineered to feel amazing right before they ruin your night. So the least you can do is build a few fences before people fall off the dopamine cliff. That's why good platforms, or at least licensed ones, include deposit limits, playtime reminders, and magical buttons like cool off mode, where you can ban yourself for 24 hours and pretend you're in control. There's also self-exclusion, which sounds noble until you realize it means locking yourself out of your own favorite app for six months because it stopped being fun and started sounding like a slot machine in your head. Age checks. Mandatory reality checks, optional but strongly recommended. And yes, some platforms now use machine learning to detect risky behavior because nothing says player safety like a cold AI that watches your 3 a.m. spins and sends you an email that basically says, hey champ, you okay? Responsible gambling isn't just a checkbox, it's the seatbelt on the roller coaster. And if you ignore it, you're not just risking your players, you're risking your license, your reputation, and possibly someone's mortgage. So build it in, display it loud, and don't be that operator who pretends play again is a valid therapy strategy. Let's stop pretending this is all about fun. This is business. And lottery games are basically vending machines for dreams, where every coin dropped leaves a small but reliable cut for the house. The magic word here is volume. You don't need whales betting thousands. You need millions of players scratching their screens for $2 wins while sipping coffee and lying to themselves. And with a 5 to 10% house edge on instant games, that's a lot of coffee-funded revenue. The model is simple but ruthless. Bait with big jackpots, retain with daily wins, and reskin the same math engine every week with a new theme. Zombie cash, Christmas crackers, Lucky Lemurs, you name it, someone's scratching it. Add loyalty points, second chance raffles, maybe a progressive jackpot that grows every time someone clicks the, like it's a social post, and boom, you've got an engagement loop that prints money. Some platforms even gamify the losing. Didn't win? No worries. Here's a badge, because nothing softens financial disappointment like a cartoon trophy and a push notification saying, you're almost a winner. In short, this isn't about luck, it's about systems. And those systems are built to keep players in engaged and always just one ticket away from maybe making it big. While most players are praying for three matching diamonds, there's a whole other group cashing in every single day, the operators. And the winners? They are not always who you'd expect. National lotteries like the UK's All Win or France's FDJ have gone fully digital and now rake in billions by selling the same old draw games, dressed up in sleek mobile UX and wrapped in a narrative of good causes. They sell hope and get applause for it. That's a cheat code. Then you've got the private players, Lotto Land, The Lotter, Platforms that don't even sell real tickets sometimes, they just let you bet on the outcome of official draws. It's legal in many places, insured to the teeth, and absolutely genius. They give global access, faster UX, and in some cases, better payouts than the actual state lottery. And in the back end, big name providers like IGT and Scientific Games power the tech, the RNGs, the libraries of scratchers with mini games and confetti explosions. If you're playing a slick online scratcher in Michigan or Virginia, there's a good chance Neo Games or EQL Games had their code under the hood. What all these players have in common is one thing, trust. Not just flashy games or giant jackpots, but the confidence that if you do win, they'll actually pay you. In a market where hope is the product, reputation is the only real currency. So there you have it, the weird, wonderful world of online lottery games. A place where psychology meets probability, where front-end glitter hides back-end logic, 
and where one person's $5 scratcher is another company's revenue forecast. You've seen how the brain gets hooked, how the math gets tuned, how the tech gets built, and how the laws wrap it all up in red tape with a smile. And yes, you've seen who's really winning. And it ain't always the player. If you made it this far, congrats, you're a legend. Hit that like button, subscribe, and leave a comment with your lucky number. Just don't blame me if it never hits. I'm Mr. Palti. Stay sharp, stay legal, and scratch responsibly.